Oh my goodness. Okay, hopefully I'm live and this is working. Uh, Facebook wouldn't let me go live and there was a weird glitch happening. I changed locations. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you're here. Say hi. Okay, so I want to dive right in and I want to offer you a lot of value here in this enlightened marketing in an unenlightened landscape. And so I want to start by talking about what I mean by that. What the, what the hell does that mean anyway? Um, and I would love to know from you, if you're here live or you're watching on the replay, what are those like feeling states that hold you back from feeling free to show up as yourself authentically, grow your business on social media? Hi, Daylan. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. Thank you for saying hi. Okay, so good. It looks like I'm live and I'm good to go. I also want us to do a quick tap. I want to whew, really like bring our energy into alignment. Hopefully I'm not too echoey down here either. All right. So um, let's talk about this. Like, what does this mean? Enlightened marketing in an unenlightened landscape. So, you know, when I say enlightened versus unenlightened, I don't mean, uh, there's no judgment in that. There's no judgment call in that. We are all at different levels of evolution in our own journeys here. Um, we all come with our own experiences, our own needs and reasons for safety or for doing the things that we do and, um, you know, like creating and producing in the way that we create and produce. But what I mean by unenlightened, let's start with that, is that in on social media, there's a very prevalent energy that tends to lead the way, which is the ego. And I don't say ego again with judgment. And I don't say in terms of like, look at me, I'm the best because the ego is not just that. That is just one tiny little fraction. And a lot of people's ego doesn't even have an expression like that, that says like, look at me, like I'm the best. In fact, the ego creates safety for people and for many empathic, intuitive, highly sensitive entrepreneurs, the ego actually says, don't look at me. It's not safe for you to look at me. And so the unenlightened landscape of social media is really ego driven. And so there is this underlying current of um, needing to be safe, of hurt, of fear. Um, really, it's like this veil of illusion that um, is not tapping in to like the essence of who we are. It's not really, it's not coming from this enlightened place of this, what I call the soul self. So, you know, we're at a time and place where more and more people are, are um, really feeling the call to do more deep inner work. Hi, Heather. Uh, deep, thanks for being here. Feeling the call to do more deep, deep healing work. You know, even in my own healing practice, I, um, I have, I have more clients. I have clients coming all the time. And many of these clients who are coming to me have done years of traditional therapy. And they're now coming to receive the next level, right? The next step. So the unenlightened landscape also is very focused on mindset, right? Mindset is very, uh, it exists in the cognitive mind, which means we are not tapping into the deeper accessible states that we have within us somatically in the body and then also through again from my practice through the portal of the heart where we access these higher dimensions of who we are right this this light this love this space of possibility this connection this unity this law of one um, being state when we begin to heal from that place versus just working on our mindset or just talking about the things that have happened to us and you know really being focused sorry I've got like some dog fur on my face um really being focused on um the thought patterns that created our reality we are able to go so much deeper right so when we're not just working with the thought patterns we're not just working with the brain the, the brain the brain oh man so I remember when I was a social worker one of our clients uh, one of the kids in our care uh, she had a whole variety of diagnoses, but her care team wanted her to go hard into cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy. So really hard into CBT. We had her doing worksheets where she would be tracking her thoughts throughout the day, writing them all down. God, this girl was so dedicated and devoted. And I don't even know where that came from for her because her behaviors and her trauma were so, um, 
they're so big and they clouded so much. And what I began to notice in her experience of that was it became an obsession. So she was also diagnosed with OCD. So this became the new obsession was like just mining and dissecting her thoughts all the time. And for somebody who has experienced trauma, which hello is every single one of us, because trauma is not actually the thing that happened to you. It is your metabolized response to the thing that happened. And so every single one of us has trauma on some level, some level or another. Um, and I, I won't get too much. I won't get into that here. It's not the purpose of this um, training. But what happens when when you have trauma that is quite present in your life and it's clearly impacting your life in a variety of ways, like it was for this young person, uh, we tend to. Uh, now I've lost my train of thought. What do we do? Oh, so we just like divert our attention to this other thing that's going to continue to maintain that wall so I don't have to look at my trauma, which was what was happening for this young person. She was obsessed with her thoughts, dissecting her thoughts. This is also what's happening in this unenlightened landscape on social media. We're obsessed with mindset. We're obsessed with changing your thoughts, speaking your affirmations. These, I mean, that's a whole other thing, but um, we are missing an aspect of potential limitless possibility for us by going deep within and coming from this place of enlightenment of doing somatic work within the body of accessing our soul self of accessing the um this unity consciousness that flows through us between us all of us all the time and so i know that if you're watching this you know on a certain level what i'm talking about um you likely know exactly what i'm talking about and so we have an opportunity from my perspective to really sort of be the pioneers or the way showers of this enlightened marketing in this unenlightened landscape in an effort to, of course, access even more of our authenticity, our authentic voice, our authentic message, our purpose, our medicine, and share it in a way that feels like those veils of illusion have been lifted, but to also inspire other people to perhaps drop some of their ego-driven marketing tactics, um, you know, and come into more of this enlightened state so that we can detoxify this landscape as well, so that there's less harm done, so that there's less trauma being held in place. So that was a very long-winded way of, of explaining what this enlightened marketing in an unenlightened landscape is that I'm talking about. So I would love to know like, what lands for you around that. Um, what sorts of experiences have you had of recognizing this like unenlightened um, landscape and perhaps its impact on you, there's or its impact on your clients, your own business. Because the thing that is happening is um, the loudest voice, not necessarily the most authentic vo voice or enlightened voice, is the star of the show right now. And so I don't know if you've been having this experience of feeling like, hello, like, is this thing on? Who are you here? Can you hear me? Um, you know, there is a purpose for that. And so it takes a certain amount of consistency and awareness and, you know, persistence and also partnership for us to start to break through that noise with our enlightened um, marketing messages. Yeah, Kirsty says being conscious feels so key, so, so key to be conscious, right? Conscious awareness. Awareness is power. And when we move from awareness and we accept, okay, so this is what's happening right now. Now I'm going to accept that this is happening. How can I take self-responsibility so I can move something forward? And this I feel like is where um, the women in this group are at. Like you're ready to take this self-responsibility, which is going to be the thing that moves you forward into this inspired action and helps you access your authentic voice, your message, your medicine, share all these things that we're talking about. So right now, this is really a time time for courage because when you transform and evolve your results will transform and evolve too right we know that there are um, significantly more possibilities than limitations here on planet earth and so your possibilities with everything they're limitless when you understand how to win against this ego aspect of your human nature because this ego aspect of your human nature it actually does not want you to be limitless 
right? Because limitless feels, sorry, keep like adjust. I have some notes. I took notes. I don't usually do notes, but I have notes. Your, you know, your human nature, this ego part of you wants you to be safe, which is again, what this unenlightened landscape is really promoting. So, and it's an illusion that your ego holds you back. Hang on. I'm going to see if I can adjust my, my notes here. Okay. So it's an illusion that your ego is not an illusion that your ego hold, holds you back. That's a true thing, but it's an illusion that, um, that you're, you're unsafe and that that's why your ego is holding you back. You are not unsafe, right? Because the things that you're going to need to do to be able to cut through this noise of this unenlightened landscape are likely going to feel unsafe to your ego, to your human nature, right? But that is a lie. You're actually more safe when you do the things that your limitless spirit knows that you are here to do right? That is the safest of all because we are actively shrinking the impact of the ego when we're doing that work and you are becoming more of your true limitless enlightened self. And so this is how we become, we begin to cut through this noise of the unenlightened landscape. So when you think about doing the things that feel unsafe, to your ego, like what does that bring up for you, right? So, you know, let's hypothetical this. So let's let's say that you are going to, maybe you're not used to doing Facebook Lives or maybe you've never really promoted something um, of your own, right? Because this is another thing that's happening in this unenlightened landscape is there's a lot of noise around promoting other people's work over your own. And it can feel like the safe thing to do to ride someone else's coattails. But what happens in the process of that, we actually begin to break our own belief in the power and the potential and the possibility of our own impact, of our own medicine. 100% yes, there are people here who are meant to promote other people's work, who are meant to be connectors, who are meant to do that. I am going to say that the majority, if not all of you here, are meant to be promoting yourself. You are meant to be sharing your own medicine with the world. Now, that's not to say that you can't ever promote or support other people, but when that message comes from what you intuitively know is this unenlightened ego driven place where someone is perhaps saying the right words, but their energy does not align and something within you says that feels off. But then if you say something about it, the response is, well, that's your own scarcity mindset, or that's your own poverty consciousness, or that's a story that you've created for yourself. That's a clear indication for you to say, hold up, can I trust my own intuition and knowing here? And is this an invitation for me to get off of somebody else's coattails, even though that might look like the easier path or the shinier path? Again, that's your ego that's saying it's safer over there. If that, if they, if they blow it, you don't blow it, they've blown it. You've not blown it, they've blown it, right? Like how, how much is that fear alive for you around if I go out, and I share my own medicine with the world, and I feel like I fail, what will that mean about me, right? What will that mean about me? These are the types of, of fears that we want to be looking at because when I started this little jam sesh talking about trauma, the majority of the population on planet Earth has abandonment trauma. And from a variety of things, you know, okay, so we're, we won't get too much into that. If you have questions about that, pop them here and I can talk about abandonment trauma. <laughs> I don't want this just to be a whole conversation about trauma though. But the majority of us have, yeah, so true on the fear front. 
So we have this trauma of being abandoned at some point or multiple points in our lives, right? We had parents who grew up with this, you know, Dr. Spock sort of consciousness that if your child is crying, they're just trying to get your attention and you just got to like wait it out or you got to break them. You know, don't, don't pick up your kid when they're crying at night in bed. You need to just let them cry it out and go to sleep. Again, no shame to anybody who did that. We did cry it out method with our first. We didn't know. We didn't know better. Right. Um, or even you went to daycare or you were left with the grandparents and as a nine month old baby, you wondered why am I being abandoned? Like it's so simple, right? So we're, we're talking about these deep core wounds that became internalized as trauma. Some people, no problem, never it impacts them their whole lives, just goes along their merry way. Some people so totally completely impacted. It's a spectrum, right? But what happens is when we then want to go and really share our true authentic voice in medicine with the world, with other people, we, en we endeavor to be courageous enough and brave enough to do that. The fear that abandonment wound instantly gets triggered and the fear is, will I be rejected? And if I am rejected, how will I handle that? And so we've created these lives that feel safe, because we have, they've been created through these wounds. So like Kirstie says, the fear, the fear to put ourselves out there. Is it safe enough for me to get behind myself? Um, I attract a lot of women who are in network marketing because that's how my coaching business started. And so a lot of women in network marketing, there's a, like a double-edged sword. And one of those edges is uh, shame around like selling someone else's product, right? Shame around participating in something that has this, in many people's eyes, this negative connotation of like being a pyramid scheme, which is not. Um, so that's the first thing, right? So there's this shame, this wound of shame that comes up um, around being visible in, in that. And then the second edge of that is this for some, this underlying awareness that selling for the, through this mental, mental, selling through this network marketing business is actually a buffer of that is keeping me safe from what I, my true desire is, which to, which is to sell myself or sell, you know, my medicine, my, my gifts. Um, and that feels too vulnerable. And so it feels easier to, so it's similar to the coattails, right? It feels easier to buffer myself with this product, with somebody else's business, right? So let's do a quick tap and we're just gonna like, you know, bring this, um, this ego, just gonna quiet this ego and we're just gonna invite the your soul self to be even more present here with us in this conversation today. So let's take a nice gentle breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. You can close your eyes if that feels good, if it's safe for you to do that. Tapping on this side of the hand and let's take a nice, another nice gentle breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And I invite you to repeat after me. Even though there's a part of me that intuitively knows that it's time for me to step up and be more courageous. Uh, it feels a little unsafe. And I want to love and accept myself anyway. even though I cognitively understand that my possibilities are limitless. It really doesn't feel that way. I feel limited in many ways. And I want to love and accept this part of me that is feeling this way anyway. And even though I know that my ego is holding me back, it doesn't feel safe just yet. 
to get behind myself in a bigger way. And I feel the discomfort of this in my body. Right here, right now, I'm safe. And I wanna love and accept myself anyway. Good job, top of the head. It just doesn't feel very safe. Eyebrow point. It doesn't feel clear. Side of the eye, and I don't feel confident underneath the eyes, not in the way that I want to. Underneath the nose, when it comes to marketing myself, underneath the mouth and allowing myself, collarbone point, to truly believe in who I am, underneath the arms and what I have to offer to others. Underneath the chest, it just doesn't feel clear wrist point, and I just don't feel confident and safe. Top of the head, and I feel the discomfort of this in my body. <sighs> Eyebrow point, all of this tension, side of the eye, all of this uncertainty, underneath the eyes, all of this impatience, Underneath the nose, because I want to get moving. Underneath the mouth, I want to transform and evolve. Colorable point, but I don't yet know what to do. Underneath the arms, it feels overwhelming. Underneath the chest and not totally safe. Wrist point, and I'm voicing all of this out loud now top of the head and I give myself permission. Eyebrow point to start letting this go. Side of the eye, I give myself permission. Underneath the eyes to start releasing the tension. Underneath the nose to breathe a little deeper. Underneath the mouth to release the confusion and fear. Collarbone point to release the uncertainty and lack of safety. Underneath the arms, clearing the way now. Underneath the chest, giving myself permission. Wrist point to create space for something new. Okay, so let's stop there and take a nice deep breath. And so just notice how that feels for you. Notice if anything shifted, any thoughts that came up that popped up into your mind, any feelings in the body that arose. All of these are just like little nuggets of wisdom or information for you. So we're going to do another round of tapping. So this is one of the things that I love, love, love about tapping is like, you probably couldn't tell, but I actually like burped a couple times. <laughs> when we were tapping, which is great because otherwise if you use like big ugly yawns and my like nostrils flare open and it's like, ah, they make noise. Um, but we're shifting this energy, right? We're shifting it. And so we can use tools like EFT tapping to help us shift this energy in the body um, and access this soul self uh, with a lot more like clarity, like a clear line, a clear channel of communication versus... Um, you know, where we tend to start when we like come at, you know, our business and general life is, you know, from the ego, uh, especially if you don't have a regular practice for yourself where you are actively working to like quiet the impact that the ego has and those traumas are having on your life and becoming more somatically connected to the intuition and the compass that lives within your body um, and your soul self. Kirsty says, uh, felt some emotion when loving, accepting the self and being scared came up. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Awesome. So let's tap again and let's take another gentle breath. And let's say this, even though there's this part of me that feels afraid, I want to love and accept this part of me anyway. 
And even though I have big dreams and aspirations for my life, uh, it's not yet clear to me what all the steps to take are to get there. And maybe I can allow myself to feel safe in the not knowing instead. Especially because there's a part of me that knows that the how will unfold with each step that I'm meant to take. And I let this part of me take up more space here now. Good job, top of the head. All of this feeling of being scared. Eyebrow point. All of this uncertainty. Side of the eye. It is starting to shift. Underneath the eyes. And I wonder what it would feel like. Underneath the nose. To be free of this fear. Underneath the mouth. Just. Just enough collarbone point to let some more possibility and courage come through. Underneath the arms, I wonder what it would feel like underneath the chest to be sitting in this space of possibility, rest point, and the space of courage instead top of the head. I'm getting curious now. Eyebrow point. And I'm choosing to embrace side of the eye, this new possibility and potential for myself. Underneath the eyes, I'm choosing to create space underneath the nose for my possibility and potential underneath the mouth and my courage to take up more space. Color one point, I get to choose how I wanna feel. Underneath the arms, I get to choose where I place my attention and focus. Underneath the chest, I get to choose if I transform and evolve. Rest point, I am in a place of choosing now. Okay, so let's stop there. Take a nice deep breath again. And so now from this place of choice, ask yourself, how do I want to feel instead? How do I want to feel instead? And let me know in the comments, how do you want to feel instead? I know for me, I want to feel, I, I want to feel safe and confident. I want to feel trusting that my message always lands with the people that it's meant to land with. I want to feel like a rebel. I want to feel impactful. I want to feel like a shit disturber, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> I want to feel like a shit disturber. I want to feel like I shake things up for people, that I help cut through that noise. Um, and sometimes that noise is in your own head or in a place of discomfort in your body. That's how I want to feel. So, okay. Kirsty wants to feel relaxed, grounded, and sure. Beautiful. Okay. Hi, Marnie. Okay, Marnie wants to feel empowered. Beautiful. I also added successful. I want to feel successful. I want to feel impactful. I want to feel rebellious. Marnie wants to feel excited. Yeah, excited, powerful. Yes, inspirational. Yes, love that. I want to feel inspirational to myself and to others. Yeah, love it. Okay. Oh, 
Hopefully you can hear me. My phone's going to die soon. So we're going to do one last round of tapping. Um, so what we're doing here, this is enlightened business creation, <laughs> right? This is like, we aren't sitting there. We aren't just sitting here and there's a time and place for this, but we're not sitting here talking about what does our audience want to hear, right? What does your ideal client need for, do you need to hear from you in order to buy from you, right? This is enlightened business creation. Okay. So Angela, what is the opposite of not overwhelmed for you? I want you to come up with that word, that feeling state, the opposite of not overwhelmed. Um, you know, this is us aligning our own energetic compass to be the force for change that we're truly after, right? So instead of trying to use our brains and these like tactics to like hook people in, hook, line, and sinker, right? We are using the power of our true heart's purpose, our soul self, um, free from ego as much as we can be free from ego because we're still here as humans. So if you are aligning with this sort of business evolution and transformational work, then you are likely to love shine, uh, our new holistic visibility illuminator, which like, I think it's hilarious. I'm such a wordy person. <laughs> came up with that at like one o'clock in the morning. Holistic. Anyway, I love it. Holistic visibility, which honors all of these parts of ourselves. It acknowledges the trauma. It acknowledges the wounding. It acknowledges the ego. And so in shine, we are doing this work times like a hundred. So this is sort of like the Facebook live version. Some of you, I know are on the enlightened marketing masterclass. You, um, got a taste that's maybe like 33% of what we're going to be doing in shine because in shine, one of the things that I love to do in my practice, and we can do this in the, in a group and in group work, it's freaking incredible because change happens so much more deeply. Um, when it's amplified by community, when we're all in that experience together. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going in through the body. We're going to be doing all of this deep somatic heart, um, connected, centered work to really create true safety, true enlightenment, true consciousness, transformation, and growth that you are then going to be able to share your authentic voice, share your medicine with so much more courage and confidence, groundedness, relaxation, excitement, empowerment, impact, you know, all of these beautiful things that you are endeavoring to feel for yourself and create for others. So if that appeals to you, I would love for you to shoot me a message, book a call with me. Um, you can just sign up if you want. We're a very small, intimate group. It's going to be really great. We get started next Wednesday. Um, Kirsty says, loving the tapping. Yay. Uh, you are part of such an integral, positive movement for humanity. Blessed to be here. Oh my gosh, Kirsty. Thank you for that. I'm so grateful for that. I received that with so much love. And so are you, right? We are here together doing this. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you because we, we have work to do, right? We got work to do. Okay. Beautiful. Angela says she wants to feel peace. Yes. Peace and calm. Okay. So let's do our last round of tapping and we're actually just going to go straight to the top of the head. You guys are amazing. Nice big deep breath. Eyebrow point. And let's say this. I choose to embrace a new way of being and feeling. Sorry, I, I choose to embrace a new way underneath the eyes of being and feeling now. Underneath the nose, I choose to lead with feeling relaxed. Underneath the mouth, feeling grounded and sure. Collarbone point, I choose this new way of feeling now. Underneath the arms, I feel empowered. Underneath the chest, I feel inspired. Wrist point, I feel inspirational to others. Top of the head, I know that I'm making an impact. Eyebrow point, I know that I'm here to make an impact. 
side of the eye and I know that I'm here to be successful. Underneath the eyes, I'm here to be a little rebellious. Underneath the nose and through all of this beautiful growth, underneath the mouth, evolution and transformation collarbone point. I am peaceful in my body. Underneath the arms, I am calm and confident. Underneath the chest, I am aligned with my highest timeline. Wrist point. Other hearts are hearing my heart's message. Top of the head. Other minds are being shifted through my work and words. Eyebrow point. This is my truth. Side of the eye, and I'm embracing it with my whole being now. Underneath the eyes, this is my new truth now. Tapping again on the side of the hand, and we're going to say, Yes, yes, yes. And so it is. All right, well done. So let's take another nice big deep breath. And out. Beautiful, good job. So let me know how you're feeling. Let me know in the chat below. Um, give some, um, some emojis, <laughs> some hearts. Let me know how that feels for you. What came through for you? When we're in this state of alignment, this is an amazing time to listen, right? Listen to your senses. Information is going to come through for you. You're going to just have thoughts, new thoughts land, new awarenesses land, new sensations in the body. Maybe you'll even like smell something or hear something or taste something that wasn't there before. Uh, like there's just so much available to us that um, we haven't tapped into. We just haven't. We've only tapped into a fraction. So from my perspective, this is why enlightened marketing is so important. It leads with aspects like this. It leads with your true soul self. It does not lead with the ego. It does not lead with scarcity or sleaze or any of that stuff. It leads with the true heart of who you are. Marnie says, feeling like I'm ready to take on the world and share my message. Yay. Amazing. Oh, Kirsty, best lunch break. Well spent. Yay. Loved the being rebellious. Brought a smile on my face and it sung true to me for sure. And you didn't expect that. That's so cool. So there's like this little part of you that was like, yeah, like let's be rebellious. Let's do something that like is sort of outside of the norm. I love that. All right. So um, let me see. I'm just going to check my notes and see if there's anything else that I want to share with you. I think we're going to end there. Uh, so in shine, just to mention one more time, I'm going to teach you the tools to really, truly break through, right? We're breaking through. We're going to break through the noise. We're going to break through the noise of your own ego self, of your own limitations. And when you do that, that's what helps you break through this toxic noise of the online space so that you can finally grow your business so that you can grow business that's actually sustainable. That's not just like, oh, I'm going to like launch this one thing and maybe something will sell or, oh, maybe one client has come in or I've had one, you know, good, you know, for the network marketers, I've had one really good class or one really good sale, but I don't know where the next one is coming through, um, is coming from. So I'm going to teach you these tools to break through so that you can lead with this enlightened self in everything that you do. Um, it's amazing. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to share it with you. Yay. Angela says feeling positive, Kirsty. Yes, yes, yes. And so it is, which is like one of my favorite things to say. All right. Thank you for being here. If you have more things that you would like to jam on with me, like I said, shoot me a message, book a call with me. I'm totally here for it all day long. Join us in shine. It's very affordable affordable. It's um, eight weeks together. You do need to set aside. My nose is so itchy. When I'm moving energy, my nose gets like so tickly. Um, it's, it's a lot. It is eight weeks and the sessions are 75 minutes to 90 minutes a week. Um, and there is an incredible community. That's part of it is we need to be able to support each other and pr honestly, like practice being ourselves 
give me a heart if you know what I'm talking about, right? Feeling safe to actually practice being yourself and saying the fucking things that you actually want to say that you've never maybe felt safe to say other than with like a handful of your closest people. So we're going to practice that, right? Because it's saying those things out loud, loud um, on social media that is actually going to attract those soulmate clients to you. I really hope my phone doesn't die. Let me see. I can plug it in. Um, so the community aspect is really, really big when we're doing this work. So we've got an amazing community already beginning to come together there. Um, so yeah, I hope that you join us. This is not a course that's fluffy. So if you're ready to really create significant, permanent change, um, then join us. You'll love it and it'll be great. Okay, have a beautiful rest of your day and thank you for being here. I honor you for spending this time with me. Thank you so much.